This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Sponsorship provided by AWeber.com, GetFlywheel.com, and Wistia.com. Hello, welcome to another edition of Philly Drone Tech here on the phillytech.org netcast network. I'm Tom Brunt. Well, I've got a lot of uh, interesting news to talk about today. Uh, basically, most of it concerning the FAA. Um, but before uh, before I get into that and uh, reveal what the, the big news is, uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what I've been up to lately. Uh, you might remember my last... Uh, my last podcast, I mentioned that I have my, my beloved uh, Humpty D, uh, Phantom One, uh, going under the knife to have uh, be completely upgraded. Uh, I, I mentioned that I, I put him in a new shell, I got a new updated controller board for him, uh, and added a, a, a telemetry display into my uh, FPV monitor. And uh, well, I'm happy to say that uh, it went uh, successful. And here he is. He's uh, all back together. And once the weather finally improves, where it's uh, above uh, zero here in the Philly region, uh, I can uh, take him out and uh, test him and uh, start getting back to work. I've got a number of projects that uh, uh, have been kind of handed to me. So uh, I'm, I'm ready to get back to work with uh, Humpty Day. Uh, speaking of him, uh, because of what I'm about to talk about with the FAA, uh, uh, I had uh, contact with my local newspaper, the uh, Intelligencer, up in Bucks County. Uh, they uh, came out to the house with a f photographer and interviewed me about my thoughts with uh, uh, drone technology. So uh, some good positive press that uh, you'll be able to see. I'll leave a link up on uh, how you can look at that, uh, that uh, article there. And uh, I'll also uh, post on my uh, Twitter account at uh, Drone Guy Tom. So I'm looking forward to that. So now let's get uh, underway with the news. Uh, the FAA, seemingly out of nowhere, it was uh, Sunday, February 15th. They finally did it. They uh, released what's called an NPRM, uh, Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. Uh, these are the rules, folks, that they're coming up with uh, to allow for a commercial market. And from what I've read online, uh, from those who have been following this, it's actually, it's pretty good news. They, they may have gotten this one right. Uh, so anyway, it's a, it's a big read. Um, it's about, uh, it's well over 100 pages. But uh, surprisingly in speak that, uh, you know, us mere mortals can understand. It's not uh, exceptionally uh, legal speak. Uh, so to say. So uh, it's, it's, I definitely recommend that you uh, take a look at it and, uh, and see what you think. One thing that they're uh, allowing is they're asking for public comment. Uh, uh, an NPRM basically is open for public content, comment for 60 days. So um, I am definitely uh, putting all my thoughts together and sending in my public comment, which uh, I will I'll talk about later. And uh, you'll get to see what my public comments are. So anyway, let's talk about what the uh, rules have to say. Well, um, gone is the full pilot's license. Um, thank God, uh, that's, that's gone. Uh, gone is also the full medical certificate. Um, what you will uh, be getting is a, what's called a, uh, an SUAS operator certificate. Uh, this is, uh, you, you will get this by passing a written test. Uh, what they're saying is that the test will have to do with uh, testing you for basic aeronautical knowledge. Uh, they want to know that uh, you understand the uh, U.S. airspace. So that's, that's what the test is and what to do if they're going to give you probably scenarios. Think of it like a written driver's test. I'm pretty sure that's about what it'll be like. And it will only cost a couple hundred dollars to get this license, not thousands or tens of thousands. So that's very good news. Um, uh, let's see, you will also be retested every two years. Uh, they do that for pilots as well. So they wanna make sure that you've retained the knowledge to fly your craft. Uh, so what are you allowed to do? Well, uh, you, you will be able to fly line of sight only. Um, but you can use an observer 
on the ground. You, you, you're not required to, but you can use an observer to look at the craft at all times. And you can place the observer where they can have a better view of it than you can. But they are still limiting it to, I think, uh, well, they're not really limited. They're limiting it to a, a line of sight. So uh, that's, they're not really saying like how far that is, but uh, with an unaided eye, uh, that's about as far as you can fly, but you can use an observer which can extend your distance a little bit uh, It's daytime only no night flights uh, This is interesting though. Um, the uh, Hobbyist rules uh, had a, a maximum height of 400 feet. They're allowing 500 feet uh, 500 feet uh, encompasses all of what's called class G airspace uh, That is from 0 to 500 feet above the ground and the reasoning for this is the fact that uh, airplanes, uh, uh, except for their ascent and descent into an airport, cannot fly any lower than 500 feet. So the risk of hitting an aircraft is extremely low uh, at 500 feet or, or less. So there, there we go there, 500 feet. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh, they're allowing a maximum speed of 87 knots. Now, if you don't know how fast 87 knots is, it's pretty darn fast. It's 100 miles an hour. So uh, I don't know of any uh, craft we have currently that, uh, you know, is going 100 miles an hour uh, line of sight, too. Uh, that's a very quick flight. But uh, anyway, they're, they're opening up public comment on that, whether that's uh, too fast, too slow. Uh, it's kind of negligible, I think, um, at least for a, a lot of applications. Um, but, you know, it might be good for things in the future. Uh, but 100 miles an hour uh, below 500 feet seems pretty fast. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, basically, uh, avoid aircraft. Uh, if you come across that you're in the flight path of an aircraft, what they're basically saying is you get out of the way. Um, they have a couple of rules that they're going to talk about to have, you know, they want to make sure that you know how to basically mitigate uh, damage and catastrophe. Uh, but they have, are acknowledging that the size and weight of these things are small in such that, you know, a crash is not going to be like an airplane crash. So they're, uh, they've acknowledged that. Uh, which is, is big news. It, it allows, uh, uh, this is going to allow a lot of commercial use to take off, uh, pun intended. Um, other things you cannot do, uh, you, you still cannot fly over people. However, uh, they can be undercover or uh, directly involved with the flight. I'm not sure if that means, like, say, an example, a, a movie set. Uh, can you, if everybody in the scene is part of a movie set, is that okay to fly over them? Um, if you're flying in a public area, it's up to you to alert people that you're doing so and ask if they're okay with that. So that's, that can, that's pretty good. Um, cannot drop any objects from the craft. So, you know, any little stunts or, or gimmicky uh, publicity stunts, nope, can't do those. Um, a medical certificate like what they required for the uh, exemptions uh, is not required now. Uh, however, you will have to comply with the current uh, drug and alcohol use as it pertains to all pilots. Uh, so no drunk droning. Now keep in mind this is all for uh, if you are doing this commercially. This uh, doesn't really address a lot about hobbyist use. Um, this is all about commercial. So. Um, which is, is pretty much what everybody was waiting for. I mean, the hobbyists are, can do what the hobbyists do now. Um, but uh, they've, now they're, this will uh, fully allow a marketplace to take off. Uh, I'm very impressed and kind of surprised that it, it turned out this way because uh, all indications were they were going to get very heavy-handed and hardly allow for anything to happen. So that's, uh, that's very good. Uh, they are also, uh, one of the, the public comments uh, that they're asking for help on is they're considering a separate license class for a micro UAS. That's a craft that's 4.4 pounds or less. Um, this is close to 4.4 pounds. So would, would a Phantom be part of this? I don't know. But certainly a lot of the smaller uh, crafts. Uh, there's, they're making smaller crafts that can still fly a couple hundred feet and do some things. 
So they're considering a different class of rules to apply to those crafts. Since they are so small and so light, the risk of damage or injury is is even lower still than the the 55 or pounds less class that they're putting a small UAS uh, in. Let's see what else can I tell you about this here. Um, what I mentioned before, they're asking for public comment, uh, allowing, uh, and they specifically ask you can you can talk to them about anything, but they're specifically asking for uh, input as far as allowing uh, non line of sight in certain certain situations. Um, and allowing nighttime in certain situations. Uh, um, I'm planning on chiming in that, uh, yes, they should. Maybe not in every situation. Uh, maybe for doing like photography, no. But search and rescue. Uh, limiting search and rescue to daytime and line of sight only uh, is kind of defeating a lot of the potential of the search and rescue. Also say, uh, using it for kind of like a reconnaissance over a large fire. If you can only fly line of sight at night, you know, that's a little tough. Maybe, um, maybe what I'll suggest is that you can fly line of sight, but a lower, lower height, not 500 feet, maybe 300 feet, which I think search and rescue isn't going to want to be really that high anyway. So uh, that's one of the things they're asking about. Um, and they're also asking about things like the speed limit and if, if that is, uh, you know, if that's, that's okay. Um, again, that's kind of negligible. Um, some of the people that aren't happy about this uh, is going to be Amazon and UPS because this does not allow for any autonomous uh, operation. Uh, everything must be operated by a, by a person and line of sight. So Amazon is not very happy. But however, part of the public comment is also should they allow for that. Um, Again, in, in certain situations, maybe they can because the technology is moving so fast that the drones uh, and UAS that we see now uh, within a year or two are going to be so much different. This is going to be uh, archaic in, in a very short time uh, because there are, and I've, I've mentioned before on, on previous shows, uh, there's, there's technology to make them self-aware basically aware of their surroundings, uh, able to avoid obstacles, avoid people, uh, and, and do self-evasive maneuvers. Uh, that, that, would, that could allow for some autonomous uh, operation. But we'll see. Uh, public comment is open until April 25th uh, of this year. So um, again, I, I'll put all the links up there on my Medium account. Uh, for you to go uh, read this and uh, I definitely suggest that if you feel strongly about a commercial market uh, make your comments known make the thoughts known and uh, you know hopefully they'll, they'll take uh, maybe they'll take some in the heart if they get enough people thinking the same way but anyway it's uh, it's surprisingly good news and uh, it, it could still take like a year uh, or so before we actually see this implemented as a law but the fact that uh, they've got the rules ready, laid out, uh, very good for them. I'm, I'm finally, uh, finally uh, have something nice to, to say about the FAA. Uh, it was a very disappointing for a while and discouraging the way they were being so heavy handed. But uh, I'm really uh, impressed at what they've, uh, what they've come up with. This is a very good, uh, good starting point uh, for commercial use of, uh, of uh, UAS. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the big news to talk about uh, in this episode. But uh, I do have some uh, more things to talk about, so I'm going to take a quick sponsor break. And uh, I'll see you in uh, just a minute. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at fullytech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. Aweber is local to the Philly region, helping entrepreneurs, agencies, and small businesses connect with their customers through email marketing. Go to aweber.com slash phillytech to find out more. And by Soho Mail professional, low-cost email with business class features and security. Okay, welcome back. 
Well, I uh, talked about in my last episode uh, that I was going to, to have a little bit of a discussion on what's known as uh, geofencing. Uh, geofencing uh, is uh, basically defined as, uh, well, look at it this way. A lot of the, uh, uh, especially like the, the DJI products, uh, use uh, GPS. Uh, so because they use GPS, they can, uh, they can actually be programmed with coordinates that will not allow it to fly in those locations. So geofencing is the uh, act of making a location uh, from the GPS coordinates that will not allow uh, the uh, drone to enter over that space. Um, there is a company out there that started called noflyzone.org. And what they uh, will do is they, for free, uh, you can register your property. Uh, you just put in your street address and they do the rest. They find out the GPS coordinates for it. And they say they have a number of uh, drone manufacturers on board. They haven't really said who they are. Um, but uh, what they will do is that they will send, uh, basically it's a list of coordinates of where you're not allowed to fly uh, your product. So you would get like firmware updates uh, to your product. And once you apply those updates, uh, if you say your neighbor has uh, registered their house uh, at noflyzone.org, your drone will not fly over it. It will just simply stop where it is in the air. Um, that's an interesting concept. And it's, it's somebody that's, you know, I give them credit for coming up with a, an idea to, to kind of combat what is, you know, a lot of people, especially those that are unfamiliar with the technology, have a lot of privacy concerns. They see drones as uh, spies. Um, so this will allow them to uh, register their home for that. Whether it's actually going to work, I do not know, because it is fairly easy to, uh, fairly easy to, to uh, avoid. Uh, you just simply don't, don't have any firmware updates on your, on your craft. Um, Will hobbyists, you know, it might, would stop hobbyists? I'm not sure because they're not going to be probably updating firmware as much anyway. Commercial use, yes, because we will keep our stuff up to date, and uh, and and as the technology progresses, uh, it'll be a way to kind of like almost have automatic like no fly zones, like say for airports. I believe DJI does this now. If you were to go you know and and sit at the base of an airport and try to take off take your phantom off it'll just sit there um they as you remember they uh tried doing this for all of washington dc but had to roll back the update due to uh, technical problems but it is certainly possible so uh one of the uh this this site is uh trying to uh, kind of future proof themselves uh, one of the things they will offer in the future is that uh, once you register your property you can have settings and say as the technology advances, let's say we do have delivery drones. Well, you could go into your settings and you can say, I'll allow Amazon drones on my property. I'll allow this on my property. I'll allow the uh, fire companies search and rescue uh, over my property, but I won't allow you know, this drone, that drone, uh, hobbyist drones, uh, things like that. So it'll be interesting to see how that, uh, that, that comes down the pike uh, as, as the technology advances and, and see how popular this site ends up being. So that's basically all I have for you. Um, you know, it was a lot to uh, bring in just with the, uh, the new FAA rules. So again, I encourage you to definitely take a look at that. Um, I will post, uh, what I'm doing now is I have a medium.com account where I can post occasional thoughts and ramblings and things of that nature. And what I've been using it for is I post the links of everything I talk about on here. So uh, if you're interested in, uh, about the FAA guidelines, uh, you can go to, here's the site on the screen here, uh, medium.com slash at drone guy Tom. And you can find uh, direct links to everything I talk about in the, uh, in the podcast. And once I do uh, put my uh, public comments in place on, uh, you know, about to the FAA, uh, I will be posting those as well on the Medium uh, site uh, for you to uh, kind of look at. And uh, so, so yeah, I hope you get to see that. And also, if you do like this show and you've seen this and other shows on the phillytech.org uh, netcast network, uh, we encourage you to become a, a financial supporter. Uh, you can go to uh, Patreon. 
and uh, anything that you uh, feel appropriate to uh, to contribute uh, would be great for helping to keep uh, keep this network uh, up and running, pay the uh, the server expenses and and uh, distribution and so on and so forth. So I uh, definitely uh, definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and as always, if you want to get in touch with me, you've seen my uh, Twitter handle there at Drone Guy Tom at the bottom of the screen the whole time, or you can also send me email at droneguy at tebweb.com. That's T-E-B-W-E-B.com. And I look forward to any of your comments and suggestions. And uh, uh, as I get them, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, read them on the, uh, on, uh, the, the podcast. So anyway, that's all I have for uh, this time. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.